Elden Ring has taken the gaming world by storm, and the accolades it has received so far speak for themselves. From masterful game design, meticulous world building, and thought-provoking lore, Elden Ring truly is the culmination of all of From Software's knowledge, talent, and most of all, ambition. The Souls games have always had a reputation for being one of the most difficult and challenging games of the action RPG genre. Not only are they challenging from a gameplay standpoint, more so they are challenging from a mental standpoint too. If you play a Souls game, one thing is certain. You will die. A lot. This can be quite frustrating for some players, but it is also one of the main attractions of playing the Souls games. Overcoming that seemingly unstoppable boss after 200 attempts is what gives some players the motivation to push through and bask in the pride of their achievements. With the hype and anticipation surrounding Elden Ring, From Software has managed to draw interest to the game and genre from all corners of the gaming world. For many players, Elden Ring is the first Soulsborne game that they will have ever experienced. Luckily, the developers have designed the game to be the most accessible to new players with a lush open world and in-game mechanics that aim to help the player progress in a less jarring manner. For one, you can call upon the aid of summons, as well as other helpful player summons called Furled Fingers to help you tackle the game's most grueling encounters. The game also has a secret easy mode. It's called being a mage. Anyway, onto the subject of this video. Just a warning, there may be some light spoilers, especially to the early parts of the game, so continue watching at your own discretion. One mechanic that is introduced early on is the Guidance of Grace. Upon reaching the first sight of Grace in Limgrave, you will meet an NPC called Vare. He will explain to you that some sites of grace have the ability to point you in the direction of the next site of grace and help guide you on your quest to the base of the Ur Tree. The Ur Tree, of course, is that massive glowing figure that dominates most of the sky and drives the main plot of the story. This is where I feel a major misconception is conceived in the minds of new players. The Guidance of Grace, which is manifested as a gold plume from certain sites of grace, was put into the game as a way of indicating to the player major sites of interest, boss encounters, legacy dungeons, and suggested paths for exploration. The key word here is suggested. The game world is massive, and the developers felt that it would be unfair to not give the most bare-bones sense of orientation in the world by suggesting routes for gameplay progression. Their intention, however, is not that you follow these routes to a T. In fact, they would actually prefer if you ignore these routes most of the time and create your own paths for exploration. And I will explain why. Many RPG veterans are used to these types of games spoon-feeding them from the very start. Quest markers, journals, autopathing, you name it. As a general rule, games will try their best to make you play the game as the developers intended. However, that is absolutely not the case in Elden Ring. The game promotes autonomy and treats the player like an adult, able to make their own informed decisions. It provides guidance and suggestions, but does not force you to do anything you don't want to. The first example of this can be seen right outside the first step site of grace, in the mighty Tree Sentinel. If you follow the guidance of Grace directly to the Church of Ella, you will undoubtedly encounter and trigger the Tree Sentinel to engage you in combat. As a level 1 player, with no prior Souls experience, this will likely be a frustrating and challenging fight. Eventually, you might realize that you can actually circumvent the boss by taking a slight detour. It's even at this early stage that the game hints to you that you do not need to blindly follow its suggestions, and rather make your own choices and explore the game's beautiful world however you see fit. A common complaint from players and a source of frustration is that the guidance of grace is leading them to extremely difficult encounters and worsening their gameplay experience. For example, if you follow the guidance of grace from the first step, and ignore the rest of the world, you will quickly find yourself at the doorstep to Stormvale Castle, where you will meet the first skill check boss 
in Margit, the fell omen. He's the gatekeeper to the castle, and in order to progress, you must defeat him. He's an extremely versatile boss who has a variety of quick and hard-hitting attacks that can overwhelm many inexperienced Tarnished. He is one of the main reasons why people get upset and quit the game. If, however, you ignore the Guidance of Grace, at least for a short while, you will be able to explore the massive expanse of Limgrave, tackle minor enemies, earn runes, find weapons, armors, and spells. It is my humble opinion that this is what the developers were expecting players to do. I think the Guidance of Grace was there to serve its purpose of highlighting areas of major interest, but not necessarily that players should follow that path directly so. I do sympathize that it is quite confusing, however. One of the main worries I hear from players is that they don't want to be overleveled prior to a main boss fight. And the reality is that a lot of the surrounding area near a legacy dungeon only provide runes that are appropriate for the suggested level of that legacy dungeon. Let's take Limgrave for example. The legacy dungeon in this area is, of course, Stormvale Castle, where you will fight one of the major bosses in Godric the Grafted. Many of the minor bosses in this area only provide around 2000 to 3000 runes, which is a very small amount. In order to overlevel, you would actively have to spend an inordinate amount of time farming runes, which wouldn't be efficient. In conclusion, I would like to just say that, especially for new players, the Guidance of Grace need not be treated as the game telling you what to do, but rather just as a highlight that there are some interesting locations that you could possibly explore at some point. By ignoring the Guidance of Grace, at least for a time, and exploring the game on your own, you are very likely to have a much more enriching, memorable, and likely smoother experience as well. However, as we have all realized by now, there is no right way to play the game. The most important factor is that everyone is having fun. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, do consider subscribing and leaving a like. On this channel, we aim to explore in-game universes, and we also like to talk a bit about lore as well. If that is something that interests you, then I do hope to see you in the near future.